Hello and welcome to another episode of Procast Show with Vinny. Now I am recording this because unfortunately my microphone wasn't plugged in. So I'm watching the video and doing a recording, so please don't judge. So today we're going to be reviewing the 2014 Renault Zoe. I have no idea what model it is, but from what I've been told, it's pretty basic. It's not mentioned anywhere else around the vehicle, so it was quite hard to tell. So we don't have the logbook. Ain't got a clue. So getting started. Uh, I hope we can answer all of your questions regarding the Renault Zoe. Now, as you can see me dancing around on screen here, the front of the Zoe has got mighty big. It's a rather large goffing front end, and it's got a very low situated number plate, which could be pretty terrible in regards to uh, high curbs. Now, as you can see behind the badge, it has neatly got the Type 2 charging port tucked away for when you drive into spaces at the supermarket where you can charge it for free. How good is that? Now this is the rapid charge model. You can go from 0 to 80% in around 25 minutes. So moving around, as you can see, Renault has really given this a stylish look. They've got the blue section to give the give you the electric feel. Uh, all models have standard daytime running lights. Now, these are extremely bright on testing this. There was a fair few times I forgot to put the lights on because I thought they were on. It doesn't tell you on the dash or anything like that. The dash still lights up like a Christmas tree. Now, as this is a pretty basic model, it only has the steel wheels with hubcaps. The interior I found very in your face, but I will let you be the judge of that in a moment. Now, the back door handles here, they have a neat little thumbprint. It does actually stop your kids from uh, ripping it open randomly and bashing into uh, other people's cars in the car park. So, looking in the back of the blue stroke green stroke white seats. Now, I'm five foot nine, or five foot eight, five foot eight, I might have shrunk. And uh, getting in the vehicle with the seat pushed back is a struggle. So, this doesn't have adults in mind when you're getting into the back of it. So, when you're buying that, bear it in mind, depending on what you're using it for, if you've got a tall teenager. As you can see, my legs are pushed right up against the seat. Uh, being a pretty soft seat, the person in front would feel every movement I did, and it would be probably quite uncomfortable for them. Now, this also worth noting if you have children, uh, you know, when you've got toddlers and they're in child seats, they do like to play football with the back of your seat. So just bear that in mind um, because it does become quite uncomfortable. So, moving on. So now we're moving on to the back of the car. Now, as you can see, I'm gently caressing those blue lines which match the front of the car. So, you know, it, it, when you see it in person, Renault have really given it a, uh, a good electric feel. You know, you know it's different. And especially being this early, they were pretty unheard of. I didn't even know they existed, to be fair, in 2014. I knew of the G-Wiz. Now you see the green stripe on the number plate, that is new for electric cars. They're probably going to be implemented something in the future where you can probably park for cheaper or you get free parking at certain charging spots. I don't know, but I guess if you've got uh, people that are going to try and park somewhere for free in a petrol, it's, uh, it's going to upset you if you need a charge. Now the boot on this car, I've for the size of it, I thought was pretty big. Now as you can see, I'm quite a lump and I can sit in there comfortably. Uh, I wouldn't be able to shut the tailgate with the parcel shelf on there. Now, walking around again, it's uh, it's, a, it's a good size. It's, it's realistically, you know, the size of a Clio or a Micra. They're not quite as big as the Nissan Leaf, so if you are looking for something bigger than that is always a good alternative. So moving on to the interior. Now, uh, Renault, have uh, given all of these a flat bottom steering wheel. 
I think that's the new craze now for car manufacturers, isn't it? So as you can see what I mentioned about the interior earlier, the it's very in your face, I find. It's, look at me, I'm electric, I'm new, and uh, yeah, just, just screaming out, you know, grubby fingerprints, get me dirty. Now, the TFT display is fantastic. It tells you everything you need to know. You've got the park, reverse, neutral and drive thing there, which I think is ideal because on the actual shift lever itself, it's not very visible, not very clear. So I found myself a couple of times going into neutral and thinking, hey, what's going on? Now, uh, traditional to all Renault models, it's got the uh, display information on the windscreen wiper stalk and you can click through and get all of your information now instead of miles per gallon you get miles per kilowatt so it tells you everything you need to know how economical your driving is which is really handy so uh, we'll go over to the display for the stereo it's got a built-in TomTom -tom sat nav which does need an SD card to work so if you're going out to buy one check it's got the SD card otherwise you won't have navigation now it does tell you your driving score on there and gives you all of the information on how to improve your economy now moving on to the glove box I actually found this quite disappointing it wasn't actually broken but it felt very cheap and wobbly which for a car that's only done 33,000 miles I was quite disappointed but again you know that could have been just this model but there didn't appear to be anything that was broken so on here I'm showing you the drive green information system now this tells you how to accelerate uh, when to slow down and bits and pieces like that and being an electric model it also does have regenerative braking which is something you need to learn to get used to when driving one of these it really is different you find yourself a lot of the time not even needing to use the brake which is nice around town you just one foot drive but obviously when you slow down you know you need to brake it's uh, it's there but I find that there's very much a slight delay from that regenerative braking to getting the real brakes and if you test drive an earlier model I haven't yet driven one of the newer models but if you do test drive the earlier model you will probably find the same thing and come back and say Vinny do you know what you were right now onto the switch panel where I'm pointing to there you've got the charger release socket you've got the dash uh, illumination the headlight aim and that other little button is actually a speaker and when you're driving along you do get a, uh, a very it's almost like uh, when you see like horror films and you see people coming out of the bushes and it's got just got that horror horror film sound to it and again it's another thing I'd always advise keeping it on because when it's not on it's absolutely silent and that can be quite dangerous when people are crossing the road they just can't hear you coming so moving on to the back of the car again we uh, I was explaining about the uh, the soft seats here and again having toddlers that want to play football with it when they're sat there and uh, you know for, for a vehicle that is capable of seating five people again you've only got three cup holders it's not very uh, very good for, for any kind of journey you know but they're not built for that they are built you know purely for town driving probably around Paris the likes of that that's probably what it was thought of but you can do a long journey on them I've managed to do Kent in this one and Kent and back which was a hundred and fifty miles uh, I had to stop three times to top up the battery so moving on now if you're anything like me I was curious to see what was under the bonnet was it going to be like the Tesla where they've got another storage point or like the old Beetle but no was I wrong look it is pure motor everywhere you've got the standard battery which 
is for the ancillaries and stuff I believe but I'm not an auto electrician so I couldn't tell you too much what it was about you can see the water reservoir there which is for your heating and the other bits and pieces there which don't mean a great deal to me if I'm honest now moving on to the battery lease now this is the bit that everybody likes to know now depending on what you're doing and things like that the battery lease is a real cheap alternative to owning an electric car so on this model for 10,000 miles per annum because it is used by a car buying service for them to drive around town to pay for vehicles and drop their staff at the vehicles to drive them back uh, it's part of their pledge to going green and if you'd like to visit them uh, they're called car buying solutions I'll put a link in the description below so the battery lease I couldn't find a great deal about this on YouTube so the battery lease is like it says you don't actually own the battery it's like a rental agreement now Renault always owned the battery and obviously if anything goes wrong with the battery Renault will then replace the battery so you haven't got that to worry about now for 10,000 miles per annum the battery lease cost is 89.99 they do do lower mileage ones I think the lowest is 5,000 and the highest is 25,000 so bear that in mind if you're planning to get this to go five six hundred miles a week it's probably not the car for you but again saying that you know it, they might if you if you own the battery outright uh, you could probably do as many miles as you wanted but that is what Renault will guarantee them for now the battery lease package also comes with a breakdown cover and in that breakdown cover it's not like a tow home or anything but they will come out rescue you and tow you to the nearest charging point but the real you know the real top selling point is the having the battery lease so when you go and buy like a lot of the Nissan Leafs they've got a battery health check in the corner of the dash and it tells you how how full that is uh, as well as how healthy the battery is now replacing a battery on one of these is probably going to cost you the best part of five thousand pounds which is a lot of money you could buy another car for that you could probably buy another one of these models for that now buying one of these models you probably pick this up with thirty three thousand miles on for about six thousand pounds and because it's the battery lease model it's a lot cheaper now if you were to buy this and uh, you own the battery you'll probably be looking at around ten thousand pound which is a big difference and if you are only using the vehicle for short trips around town and things like that it really is something to consider because the cost of it it's probably going to be cheaper for you in the long run to have the battery lease over owning the battery now when the battery does get below a certain state of charge, Renault will replace it. No questions asked, you just phone them up, explain, or take it in, and they'll replace it free of charge. Now, next bit I want to talk about is the servicing cost. Now, believe it or not, they've still got to go in for a service, um, but it's actually surprisingly cheap. Uh, this went in for a full service and an MOT and it cost think, on the invoice £320 which at a main dealer you know that's absolutely fantastic gives you good peace of mind that it's all working properly uh, worth noting that they uh, they sent out a video probably because of Covid and stuff but they send you out a video of the walk around of the vehicle and they give it a full health check as well so uh, you do get a good deal in respect to that uh, acceleration I was actually surprised for a vehicle with uh, only 80 horsepower uh, I think acceleration wise it would knock the socks off anything in that horsepower bracket so they are real good fun as well now insurance cost 
uh, for myself and my partner we've done insurance quotes on it now uh, I'm 31 and my partner is 27 and uh, for both of us fully comprehensive it was £35 a month which is really good uh, using going for a younger driver it is around about a hundred pound a month so bear that in mind but they are quite a low insurance group so they are a bit of a win-win really depending on what you're looking at from a car uh, the tire costs now some places online swear that you've got to go for uh, all um, all electric tires and apparently they're there's something to do with their they're lighter. I, I honestly don't know. I, I'm not a pro when it comes to tyres. Me and Alex did do a tyre video recently, but um, I'm not professional. So, in respects to that, this vehicle actually had four new tyres fitted by National, and uh, they're not all electric ones, but they were quite specific about the uh, the load rating on them because they are heavier than your conventional petrol car I believe this weighs around 15 or 1600 kilos and a big part of that is the battery and on the vehicle you know it covers the uh, the majority of the underside of the cabin so it's uh, it's pretty large and it does give you a low center of gravity which does improve the handling so that's uh, that's all we've got on the Renault Zoe um, if I'm honest, you know, if you're looking for something to run around town that costs you nothing, they're absolutely fantastic. They get zero tax. Um, I believe, you know, a lot of these uh, low emission zones that are coming in, they're, they're all friendly for that. Um, you can charge them for free in most supermarkets. And if you're worried about a, uh, you know, where to find charging points, because I know a lot of people, including my partner, she's very worried about an electric car purely because she uh, gets range anxiety um, but there is a fantastic app called zap map which you put in your vehicle you put in your email address they don't send you any junk and it gives you all of the charging points all over the uk and uh, other members are on there as well and they also leave feedback whether it was working how often it was out so you know just have a look at that and it, it really is helpful so if you like this video give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and uh, if there's any questions you've got about it leave them in the comments below and we'll uh, we'll try and answer any of the questions uh, straight away for you take care